I'm Ross Dawson, a futurist, together with uh, my friend Gerd Leonard, who is also a futurist. Yes. And uh, in a series of conversations uh, today, we'll talk a little bit about Nokia as a, an illustration of uh, the very rapidly changing world of mobile. So, where do you see uh, Nokia today, Gerd? Nokia? Oh, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, well, let's put it this way. I mean, I, I've, I've tried all Nokia phones for a long time, and um, I've, I was quite a diehard Nokia user. But basically what happened at a certain point, I, I feel like Nokia did not foresee, didn't have the foresight to launch, for example, the touch screen, which was a, a huge thing. And also, of course, the, uh, the software has been a problem from, with Nokia from day one, really. And, and those two things have really come back to haunt them now because the software is much better, maybe not better, but easier with BlackBerry and, and, and of course, Apple iOS. But uh, the other thing is that the touch screen really was a big step that they didn't foresee. They actually decided not, mm. to, not to look at it. Um, so uh, it's a great example of looking in the wrong direction uh, while something else goes on over here. Um, I'm not sure they can be entirely blamed for this in the sense of, of I mean, this, this just happened. And so I wouldn't go as far as saying that it was, uh, you know, that they were blindsided, but uh, maybe looking too much in one direction. So clearly one of the, the big things with uh, Nokia today is the shift to the uh, Windows uh, mobile, uh, Windows 7 phone operating system. Uh, and it's extraordinary, this massive global company which still has dominant market share in uh, many developing countries around the world, basically dropping its existing platform, which uh, until recently was Symbian dominating the operating system across many countries. In fact, it had the largest market share in Australia until just recently, when it was uh, beaten by uh, iOS. And how, uh, does, I suppose, the, the real question about the future of Nokia can be distilled into, can it make this transition to Windows OS? And a couple of points around that. One is, is Windows, whilst Windows uh, mo phone, sorry, can't remember, Windows uh, 7 phone, mm -hmm. is I think the correct uh, term for it, is it's, I like it, I like the interface, it's, but it is more suited to high end, whereas Nokia's strength is have been in the more, you know, in the current market anyway, certainly in the developing markets, lower end devices. So making that transition to pull it into that higher end devices when its positioning is currently lower is a big transition, as well as of, uh, clearly all of the extraordinary operational issues of taking this and bringing it out, uh, bringing a new operating system, uh, phasing out an old one across this, uh, the universe that is Nokia. Well, I, I think that uh, clearly the the software problem has has been Nokia's problem for a long time, and, and been somewhat ignored and somewhat fixed. But if you now travel to the developing countries, uh, and you see everyone is like 85, 90 percent of Indonesians using Nokia, and India, and and of course China used to be, but also Africa. Clearly, those people when they graduate to be, to buy a feature phone, it's not going to be a Nokia. Right? Yeah, and and that is going to be a deadly effect on Nokia. That that this is the primary job I think that they have to do now yes. is to make sure when they're graduating uh, in Africa or Nigeria or or India to the next level that they're going to buy one of those phones. If they don't do that, then they're toast. That's yeah. uh, and clearly Android is rising rapidly, not least because the Chinese manufacturers who are very efficient like to have a nice free operating system. Uh, Android fits the bill, and the basically the Chinese manufacturing are pulling out some very nice, very low cost phones and going out to global markets. And another point is that uh, in September, we're expecting from Apple the announcement of the iPhone 5. Um, and there's much discussion that they will also announce a low end phone at the same time. And I, my belief is that whether it's in September or not, that Apple absolutely will release a low end phone. It, it's, it's almost a obvious thing to do. You can create Apple quality at a lower price point at this time. Uh, uh, you know, it may not be the same phone that would, uh, you know, if you've had an iOS 4 for a couple of years, you, you want today, but there's far more who are able to uh, take that up. So creating both Apple at a lower price level and the, the rise of Android makes it very difficult in those developing markets. Yeah, okay. I mean, I as far as Nokia goes, I wouldn't be that concerned about Apple because I think Apple, there's, there's room in the market for Apple to have their 10, 20 percent market share. Apple is a, a brand that is not going to be the choice for everyone because the Apple, the entire Apple uh, 
system is uh, proprietary, it's closed, it costs money for everything that you do. I mean, rather than moving stuff to your computer, you have to buy Dropbox to move files. Right? So I think for a lot of people, that's not going to be an option. Uh, yeah. uh, and so I wouldn't be worried about that. I think the main thing is about Android. And as I was saying earlier, if Nokia can manage to get people in developing countries to buy the next generation feature phone or smartphone from them, then they're going to be good. And they have 12 months to do this. Right? That's if, right. if they don't have the next 12 months to do that and to snag those probably 500 million people doing, making that switch right now, then I think Nokia is gone. Well, Nokia has clearly got the history of reinventing itself from originally a forestry company a long time ago. So it's a, you would certainly believe it has the capability to reinvent itself again. Uh, as you say, it is a very a short window to be able to do that. I think a research in motion is also in a, a very highly compressed time frame to be able to uh, reinvent itself effectively. Uh, I certainly wouldn't write off Nokia, but it, these are challenging times. The transition this year we're going to see uh, uh, will uh, tell us the future. Well, one thing about Nokia is that I think that they need to also figure out how to disrupt something. Because if you look at Apple, they have disrupted the music industry. They have they have disrupted the whole you know the touch screen, the mobile phone market. These things are computers, not just phones. I mean, they've done all these things, right? So Nokia needs to get a little bit of disruption into their genes and be more aggressive about how they do things and also do their own thing, right? Create something that is so unique that people can't resist. Yeah, and I would hope to see that, though the alliance with, when, uh, with Microsoft's suggest that they might not be taking that disruptive path, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. see. So uh, for more on mobile and uh, the future of uh, media, you can go to uh, rossdawson.com or my blog. We've got a lot of uh, resources and presentations on mobile and the future of mobile. And uh, I have a mobile app. You know, it doesn't work on Nokia phones. <laughs> it works on Android and iPhones, and it's uh, futurist. So uh, it's run by a company called Mobile Roadie. So just put in Gert Lingonhard, my name, and mobile app, and you'll you'll be able to download it and, and look at my stuff or go to mediafuturist.com for more details. Thanks for listening.